The first scripture we're going to open up to, if you want to start turning there, is going to be John 3. And uh, I'll go over the verses here in a minute, but I want to kind of go over definitions, right? I want to define what we're talking about a little bit. So, agreeing, as I looked it up, means to have the same opinion about something. So it's agreeing is to have the same opinion about something. And I'm not going to lie, I just looked this up on the dictionary on my phone. So um, I did the same with believing at first. So the definition I found of believing is to accept something as true, to feel sure of the truth of that thing, right? That wasn't good enough for me for believing because I know that there is a lot more to it. So I had to go back to the Greek. And so in all the scriptures that I'm going to talk about tonight, when we look at believing, it's the same Greek word. And it's peace you will. If I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, forgive me. A little grace, please. Um, but peace you will means not just to believe, but also to be persuaded of and hence, or from now on, to place confidence in, to trust, and it signifies reliance upon and not mere credence. So when we look at believe tonight, that is what we're talking about. And again, that means not just to believe, but also to be persuaded of, and from hence, or from now on, to place confidence in, to trust, and it also signifies reliance upon, not mere credence. So, the first scripture we're going to look at here is going to be John 3, and we're going to start looking at verses, well, it would be 5 through 18, but I'm just going to break it up a little bit. Um, so this is when Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the evening, late night, kind of how it breaks it down, and he just wants to chat with them. He wants to find out what's going on. Um, and so we're going to start reading in 5, but I just want to make a note that if you look back in verse 2, uh, Nicodemus lets Jesus know what he knows about Jesus. And he says to him, Rabbi, we know. And I read, read that as, I agree <laughs> with you. I have the same opinion that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with them. So he's like, I agree. This, we're just going to set the foundation for this conversation we're going to have right now. I am agreeing with you that this is where we're starting from. So Jesus talks to him a little bit. But the main part I want to look at here is we'll start at verse 5. He says, Jesus answered, Nicodemus, and he's saying, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered him and said to him, How can these things be? When Jesus answered him and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and you do not know? And that word know there, he's saying you have, not ex you have no experiential knowledge of what I'm talking about. You don't know, ex you've never experienced these things, is basically what he's telling you. It says, Most assuredly, I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? So he's saying, 
you tell me all about what you know, but you haven't experienced what I'm here to actually accomplish, what I'm here to do, and that is to bring the Spirit into the mix. And Jesus, and I have read this so many times, and have not until this past week as I was meditating over and over again on these scriptures, he says, I say to you, we speak. It was the we. It was just him and Nicodemus, right? It's the Spirit. We. That's the same Spirit that dwells in you and me and everyone else in here that's filled with the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen. And you still don't believe. Right? So, continuing on in verse 13. It says, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the scepter, serpent, sorry, in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Or the uniquely born Son of God. Only begotten, right? So, I don't know. I didn't count how many times believed is used in that scripture. But there's some homework for you. How many times? <laughs> no, just kidding. But he's trying to drive a point home to Nicodemus. And what is that point? It's not about what you agree with. It's not about what you say, Oh, I know that. I know Jesus came to die for my sins. I know. I know. I know. I know. Because I've known a lot of my life, and I'm wrong, too. But, it's believing. And believing in the name. That name that is our name. Now, because this is all before everything that Jesus did for us. This is still when he's walking, ministering on this earth. This is when he's having this conversation. So, it's about believing. Not about what we agree with. So, another scripture I want to look at tonight is in Mark. It's Mark 16. Need some help? If you find Luke, just turn the page back. And uh, it's going to be verse four, for verses 14 through 18. I'll give you all that. Mark 16. And we're looking at verses 14 through 18. So this is saying... Uh, here in verse 14, it says, Later he, speaking of Jesus, appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they shall, they shall cast out demons or will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Now I love all of that. Because that's all will, shall, definitely going to happen. If you believe, these signs will follow you. It's not a maybe. It is a guarantee. They will follow you. You lay hands on the sick and you believe it will happen. It has to. It is a word of God. But it does stand out to me. What did we just read Nick, that Jesus said to Nicodemus? Those who believe 
will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. It's belief. And Jesus did not change his tune about it from day one. It is all about belief. So one last scripture we're going to look at, we're going to look at some more, but this is um, just kind of laying the foundation for us right now, okay? So we're going to look at Ephesians 1, and we're looking at verses 11 through 14. That's Ephesians 1, 11 through 14. Just a side note. If y'all haven't read Ephesians, like over and over again, it's a real fun book. It's a real fun. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a lot in it, but it's uh, it's one that the more that I immerse myself in, the more I'm like, ooh, there's a nugget. There's a little nugget. There's a little something I learned more. So, uh, but we're just going to look at this little chunk of scriptures here, and it says in verse 11, in Him, speaking again of Jesus, also. We have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also Having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the, the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So this is using trusted, right, and then believed. So looking at trusting, which we already defined as part of this word in the Greek that means believe. And it's talking about exactly what was said in Romans. Faith comes by hearing, right? And after you heard the word of truth, the gospel, so you also trusted him, but only after you heard the word of truth. You had to hear it first. And then, having heard the gospel of salvation, then you could believe. And then, when you believed, you were also so he's speaking to the church at Ephesus. He's also speaking to the church today. Any church. So after we believe, what should be the next thing? Sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And why is that? He is the guarantee of the inheritance that we already have in Jesus Christ. He is the down payment. the down payment of the inheritance that Jesus died for. I don't have to, I, and I can't remember the pastor that I heard say it, but it has stuck with me since the day I heard it. I don't have to die to inherit the blessings of God. Jesus did. Amen. There is an inheritance after somebody else dies. Somebody else is going to inherit stuff after I die. But I don't have to wait to get every bit of inheritance that is already mine. Amen. I just have to believe. That's it. All we have to do is believe. And every promise, if you look through the whole New Testament anywhere in here, in any of the epistles, any of the letters written, where it says, in him, in whom, and it starts talking about these promises that God has given us, those are all ours today, if we have believed on his name. Yep. So this leads me to the question, how can I go from agreeing in something to believing it? How can I go, you know what? I 100% share the same opinion with you on this thing, but I don't know how to believe in it. So Jesus, earlier, as we were looking at the story with Nicodemus, he was saying, you haven't had an experiential knowledge of what I'm telling you. So getting an experiential knowledge of the things that we hear, of the gospel of our salvation, how can we do that? Well, James tells us to be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, deceiving ourselves. 
any time in my life where I have agreed with something. Like, no, I see your point there. New job, right? See your point? I understand why we do it that way. Then I actually started applying it, right? And I started doing it in my life. And I could see, okay, now I've seen it for myself. So like for me, I had heard a lot about healing. I had heard a lot about how Jesus bore the stripes for everything. And I agreed with it. But I was still walking around in my past. Basically, I couldn't walk around outside. You know, my allergies were so bad in Colorado during the summertime, I couldn't walk outside without sneezing to the point where if I didn't have tissues with me, I would just have snot running down my face. It was embarrassing. I had to walk I, to multiple times, like almost hide my face as I was walking by people. And I didn't like it. I felt like looking back now, I felt like I was in bondage. Like, I had to go and, and either stay at home and have some air purifier sitting right next to me, or I had to keep tissues with me and be this you know weird guy walking around the park with a bunch of tissues in his hand. Why is he sneezing so much? Right? So I took a stand, and I said, I believe every word in this. I believe every word that God spoken to me. I believe every word in the Holy Bible. So it says I'm healed, I'm healed. And I spent every day, I walked around the same park that I sneezed in every day. And I was praying in tongues. And every time I would sneeze, for me, and this is just what Holy Spirit put on my heart. So you got to follow that leading yourself. However he leads you, I can't tell you, don't, don't try and copy me. Because it's an individual, personal relationship with the Father. But for me, I would say, thank you, Lord. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. And I just keep walking and over the period of a week, the first day, it was like a normal allergy-filled day for me. And I was like, I don't care. I know what is in this word, and I'm not going to stand off of it. I'm going to stand on the word, and I'm going to continue walking. So I got the next day, and I went and did it. And I didn't sneeze at all outside, but as soon as I got home, I would start sneezing. I'm like, all right. Tactics change, right? You start standing on something, now the taxes change. Oh, well, maybe he'll just have, accept allergies when he gets home. Maybe he'll just accept allergies outside. Maybe just in the car. Maybe if it's only two sneezes a day. Because I went through all of it. But no matter how many times, I knew, because I had experienced it myself, that this word is truth for me. And this is the inheritance that we all have as sons of God. So as I continued to be a doer of the word, it did not change my position once, no matter what the facts look like. I continued to amend. I continued to get better. And I, to this day, do not have any allergy symptoms at all. And I walk around anytime I want to a free man, Amen. not under any amount of bondage because Jesus paid for every bit of it. Amen. And he cares just as much about allergies as he does about cancer, as he does about a headache, as he does about arthritis, as he does about sciatica, as he does about anything. Amen. He cares about us. Hallelujah. And he wants us all to walk free. But we have to do our part, which is believe. And we then apply it, right? So as we become a doer of the word, it takes our knowledge that we had and makes it into knowing. To knowing beyond a doubt, that experiential knowing. That epignosis in the Greek, right? Not just knowing about something, but having experienced it and once I experienced that healing in that one area of my life, now it's like David and Goliath. What giant do I have to face today? Because God has been with me with the bear. He's been with me with the lion. He was with me with the allergies. He was with me with the hurt back. Surely, this Philistine giant ain't no problem for me today. Because I got the living God inside of me. 
He ain't even just with me. He is in me. And he's in each and every one of y'all too. If you've believed. So another section of scripture I want to look at here is in John again. And it's John 4. We're going to look at verse verses starting at 46. And John 4.46? Yep, John 4.46. So this is as we've heard of spoken before is about the nobleman's son, right? It's nobleman. He well, well, we'll read here. So it says in verse 46, it says, So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and to heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So as I'm reading this, as I'm looking at this, that lets me know that the nobleman, he's already agreed that Jesus came. Because why else would you go to him? Why else would you leave your house and go and say, you know what, I heard Jesus is around, unless you've already agreed in your head. You're like, you know what, I, he's got it. He can do it. I just need to go find him, get him to come to my house. I've heard about what he can do. So he says, he went to him and he implored him, Jesus, to come down and to heal his son, for he's at the point of death. And Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. So Jesus calls him out and says, you don't believe. You just want to see a sign and a wonder, so you will believe after the fact. You want to experience and then get the belief afterwards. But what does Jesus say? Believe and then receive. Mm -hmm. Ask and you'll receive. Amen. Seek and you'll find. Amen. Knock and then the door is going to be open. Right? Mm -hmm. So the nobleman said to him, like he didn't even hear Jesus, he says, Sir, come down before my child dies. He's like, oh, I just want you to come. Just come down. My, my son's going to die. Please. So Jesus said to him, go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And he was now going down, the servants met him and told him, saying, your son lives. Then he inquired of them what hour he got better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was the same hour which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. And he himself believed in his whole household. So again, he knew what Jesus could do. But Jesus doesn't want what we know. He wants our belief in what he has already done. Because this is before he took the stripes on his back. This is before he went to the cross. This is before he broke down the middle wall of separation between us and the Father. This is before all that. And he still just said, all you got to do is believe in my word. He was the word. He is the word. We don't have a physical representation to look at. But we have the written word. We have how he walked in, on this earth. We have the word of God. We have Jesus every day. Do we choose to tap into him? Or do we choose to go off what we know? Oh, I know it's going to be a rough day today. Oh, I, I know it's going to be another long day at work. Oh, I already know. I know it's going to be another day of pain. I know it's going to be another lonely day. I know it's going to be another sorrowful day. Or are we going to go off of what our Father has promised us in His Word and believe that over whatever we hear in the world. We have a choice every day. We can agree with the facts. We can agree with the situation. We can agree with the circumstance. Or we can believe that our Father is who He says He is. And because of that, we are who He says we are. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. We are no longer separated 
from our Father. He is here now. I don't have to wait for God to show up. I don't have to wait for Holy Spirit to come down. He's here. The rivers of living water are in us and they come out when we choose to tap into it. We can choose to know or we can choose to believe. And we can agree, like I did for a long time, that Jesus took the stripes on himself. But until I actually started believing it, but until I said, I don't care what it looks like, I will not be moved. I will never be moved from the fact that Jesus took every bit of sickness and infirmity, every bit of wrath. <laughs> Talk about an eye opener when I'm trying to figure out, man, God used to be real wrathful to his people in the Old Testament. Same God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Where'd all that wrath go? It must be pouring on me. That must be why this sickness on me. God just is trying to teach me something. That sounded real, real religious when I used to think that way. Oh, it sounded good, too. Walk around, I'm just like, man, I got him. <laughs> he said, he's just over here laughing. He's like, I got him. Got another one. Thinks God put it on him. Now who's going to take it off him? He put it on himself. He can't do nothing about it. And I'm just seeing him be like, oh, I'm just going to be a good Christian soldier. March for long. How blind I was. Because what's the truth of the situation? God poured every ounce of his wrath out on Jesus. There's no more left for me. Every time, if he wanted to pour wrath on me, Jesus is just standing there like, I got this one. You go, live your life. Live. Be the light of the world. I got the wrath. Pour it on me, Father. He is every bit. The one that is taking everything that I deserved on himself. He is it's the word propitiation. <laughs> he is that exchange that was made where I was in bondage, but he said, nah, you go free. You go live. I'm going to take this. And when I remember that, it doesn't matter what the situation looks like because I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. Because I have every bit of blessing. I am free from the curse. And you can go back and read all about the curses and the blessings from the Old Testament, but every bit of the curse has been broken. And every bit of the blessing is mine. So I start giving up the, the blessings and I say, oh, well, I must deserve the curses because I know, I know what I've done. I know how I wasn't a good, you know, Christian. I know I could have read my Bible. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Well, none of that matters when I believe that Jesus took every bit of sin upon himself. That he is the reason that I can stand before God at any moment. And in my spirit, I am in front of the Father at all times. Because when he looks at me, he doesn't see the sinner that I've been. He Amen. sees Jesus. Amen. Talk about being clothed in a new man. That's what we got to stay clothed in the new man. Because the new man is Jesus. Amen. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Yeah. <clears throat> so this doesn't just apply to healing. This applies to every promise that God has for us on this earth. It's not just for one piece of it. And so I've really been asking God, like, please show me these areas in my life where I've decided for myself to take the curse instead of take the blessing. Because if, if there is a missing piece, it's not God. <clears throat> He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly yeah. places already. It's yeah. done. Yeah. It's written. We have an inheritance. Mm -hmm. This is it. It tells us. This is a legal document of everything that we get because Jesus died. Yeah. So that's why for me, I have to look at every day. What does this say about me? 
Not, what does the work situation look like? Not, oh, I think I heard about people talking about this COVID thing coming back. I think, uh, you know, all these people are real worried about this, that, and the other. You know, my friend said this, and what does that matter? We are supposed to walk on this earth now as kings. That's it. A royal priesthood. Yeah. That's how does royalty walk? Do they worry about what everyone else is talking about? Or do they worry about what's going on in the kingdom? Amen. Are we kingdom minded? Amen. Or are we territory minded? Mm. Are we worried about what everyone's talking about that's not part of our kingdom? Or are we trying to find the people that are trying to get in and say, here, let me show you the way. Hey, man, I used to live in that darkness too, man. Here's the light. Come here, follow me. We can both get out of this tunnel together. I've already walked through it. Because it's not just for us. Amen. He didn't just die for the people that believe in him. That's not what he said. He died for everyone. Amen. That everyone would be saved. Not just for me, not just for the people that I already know. That's why he says, don't hide that light under a basket. Don't hide yourself. Amen. We should be walking around like royalty. People Amen. should look at us funny. Have you ever seen people looking at queen, princes, whatever, in other countries? Where they still got that, you know, hierarchy, whatever. Mm -hmm. They were just said, oh man, look at that. Oh man, I hope I'll be like that one day, huh? That's how people should look at us. Amen. We, we should be the kings, <laughs> queens. Princes, princesses, walking around, saying, man, I don't know where they got that or who it came from, but I got to have some of that. How about worried about what queen such and such is wearing or king such and such, what type of suit he got on? Come and find about this new man we got clothed in every single day. Find out about this Jesus that is our king. But it's when we believe that we start acting. It's the belief that comes first. And how can anyone believe if they don't hear? We have to hear. We have to share what we believe and who we believe on. The name. That name that is above every name. That name by which every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's not an option. Every knee on this earth and over this earth will have to bow in front of Jesus one day. Now, do you want to meet him as a savior or as a judge? Because we only got two options. So... As I kind of wrap up here, uh, I really encourage everyone to one, if, if you don't know the will of God, that's not scriptural. It says we should know his will. Because we have his word. This is his will. Every word of it. This is his will. I always tell people, if you're going to start in the Old Testament, finish in the New Testament, because that's where we live. Alright? Find some epistles after you read Leviticus and find out what we really got going on. But I'm just saying, get in the Word. Amen. Get in the Word. This, this is what we believe on. This is Jesus. This is the closest physical representation to Jesus that I have today. This is what I believe in. He is always the Word of God. And then the more you pour this into yourself, I promise you, because <laughs> the, the man that I can say is the dead man under that water that I got baptized in, he didn't know nothing about this. I, wouldn't, I didn't like talking about nothing, much less Jesus. I didn't want people talking to me about Jesus. Oh, I know, I know, I know. But now you can't give me a shut up about it. 
<laughs> people at work sitting around. I'm be like, hey, if y'all like talking about God and Jesus, y'all ain't gonna like sitting next to me. I'm sorry. It's just, it is what it is. But it, it's true. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what? What are? What are you ingesting? What are we putting into ourselves? Are we putting in the news media? Are we putting in what the world's got to say about the situation? Are we putting in the so-called facts of the doctor's reports that we're reading or getting told about? Are we putting in the irrefutable truth of the living God that never changes but is alive? So I know we've been encouraged over the past few weeks to, you know, start sharing some prophecy with people around us, find a couple people to, and I hope everyone's been doing that, because it is a great exercise, and I find that, it's like we talked about before, sowing and reaping, that's a real thing, so the more you sow prophecy, people are going to come back and give you some comfort, exhortation, and edification as well, because if you sow in that, you're going to reap it, but I also want to encourage us as we go out into our week, you know, that we find those people that are in the darkness, looking for some light and share the true gospel Jesus and him crucified Amen. that's what Paul says is the true God if anyone preaches any other gospel they're wrong that's what he said mm -hmm. Jesus Christ and him crucified because that's our that, that's our salvation mm -hmm. I wouldn't stop at the cross <laughs> <laughs> I, I stopped there for a little too long myself, but it's on the other side of that. When you glorify, mm -hmm. that's, that's where the blessing is at right there. Okay. Yeah, that's where it got real good. Mm -hmm. So, that's my encouragement to everyone here. Because mm -hmm. I know for me it is, it's, I don't want to walk on such a narrow road. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the closer that we get to the Father, that the fewer people are on that path. Mm -hmm. it, for me, it is. It's compa the compassion that I feel for people like myself that have been in church situations and knowing a whole lot, but denying the power thereof. Mm -hmm. But how are you going to experience it if you don't see? Because if, if I didn't see somebody lay hands on the sick and I saw them recover, I'd never know that was a real thing. I would have heard about it. I would have known it enough by reading it, but I wouldn't have experienced it. And once I experience it, nobody can steal it from me. Nobody can tell me it's not true. Because I've, I've seen it with my own eyes. It's like an eyewitness account. I don't stand up in court. So if you see somebody that needs the good news, the gospel, yeah, please find a couple people to share with this week because it might be a narrow path, but it doesn't have to be a lonely one. And I'd love to just have all of heaven rejoice as more people are added into the family. Mm -hmm. More sons. What is this earth waiting mm -hmm. for? The manifested sons of God. This mm -hmm. earth is groaning mm -hmm. in birth pains yeah. for that very thing. Yeah. Manifested sons of God. We don't have to wait any longer. Mm -hmm. We just have to believe what this says and go out and walk like the kings that we are. Amen. But not because of who we are. It's because he who is in us is greater than anything on this earth. Yeah. Any situation. Any storm. Any sickness. Any disease. Greater. And will always be. And never changes. So. Yeah. That's what I wanted to share with y'all. I don't have any exciting practice time. I'm sorry, Roberta, but I know we love practice around here. But I, I asked Holy Spirit, and he just, he, either I wasn't listening well because I moved this way. I'm not, I was, I'll share a testimony. I'll that real quick. Because I will say, I wanted to get up and share earlier. But God is so good in my life. 
I've been looking for a while for a place to live, and uh, I've, I finally found that place, and it was I a goal set, and I my faith extended, and I had some faithful brothers and sisters extend their faith with me before the 1st of September, and this past Thursday, I got to move into the new place, so, oh, yeah, it's an absolute blessing, so I'm just very grateful for it. Yay! But, yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> yeah, so, just, I just wanted to praise God, because it was all Him. I mean, finding a place that is affordable in Denver, <laughs> it's a tall feat, but Amen. not for God, I know that, so, Amen. yeah, but, uh, but yeah, because of that, yeah, I might not have been have my ears open the whole time to if there was some practice we needed to do. So, uh, but thank y'all so much. And uh, is there any other announcements or anything? We need to go? All right, well, I'm going to wrap this up with some prayer. So, Father God, thank you again for your precious, holy written word. Please. Holy Spirit, seal the seeds that have been sown tonight in fertile soil. Continue to water them that they would sprout up and be an amazing harvest for your kingdom, Father. Oh, I thank you so much for everything that you've done for us, for every gift that you give to us, and let us not keep them under the tree. Let us open them get used to operating in them just like Jesus did. Holy Spirit, we ask for opportunities this week to encounter people on this earth that need to hear your word, knowing that you will give us the words to speak in a moment, knowing that you will never leave us or forsake us, mm -hmm. that you are faithful above all. We praise you and thank you. And I know for myself, I promise I will be obedient when you ask me to speak this week. And I thank you for every opportunity that's to come. We just praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, y'all are dismissed.